Welcome to Health Professional Radio. I'm your host, and I'm real glad that you could join us again for another segment. We're going to be speaking with Dr. Catherine Lang. She's Vice President of Health Outcomes and Evidence at Garden Health. And she's joining us here on the program to talk about some research that highlights the significance of their Lunar 2 liquid biopsy test in detecting early-stage colorectal cancer with some, well, clinically meaningful accuracy. Welcome to the program, Dr. Catherine Lang, and thank you so much for taking the time this evening. Thank you for having me, Neil. I'm looking forward to talking about all of our exciting research. Well, share a bit of your background with us, if you would, and then talk about your role at Garden Health. Sure. So um, I am an MD by background. Um, I trained in oncology, as my accent gives away, in the UK. Um, I worked in pharmaceuticals for a little while and moved to Garden a couple of years ago. Um, I'm an oncologist and an epidemiologist by background, and here at Garden, my role um, is to run all of our primary and secondary observational research. And within the primary research that we do here exists our ECLIPS study, which is um, uh, one of the biggest studies in the world right now, um, looking at the clinical validation of our Luna 2 colorectal cancer screening assay. And that's what we're going to talk about today. Lunar 2 uh, liquid biopsy test, what exactly is that and um, why is it important, especially to the future of cancer and cancer research? Yeah, so the Lunar 2 test is part of a wider program. Garden Health is a leading uh, liquid biopsy company um, with products right now in the advanced cancer space. We've learned an awful lot about how to detect cancer in the blood through the last eight years of the company. And over the last four years, we've been developing the Lunar program out which is um, an advancement even on our Garden 360 product. And in order to overcome the difficulties um, associated with detecting cancer in the blood using a genomics-only approach, we actually have a multimodal assay, which includes epigenetics too. So not just the language that the genomics speak, but also the font and the script in which they're written so that we can actually try and detect cancer at a much earlier stage and ultimately apply that to both the adjuvant cancer center setting, but as we're discussing today, very importantly, screening. And what's important about that is that we know that screening is, is something that we all know we should do at certain points in our lives. However, the current modalities available are either and um, certainly for colorectal cancer screening, are invasive as per a colonoscopy, and not everyone can take two days off work to have a colonoscopy, or they're, they're culturally sensitive around store-based testing. And we know that despite the fact that colorectal cancer screening does save lives, only about two-thirds of the American population today is screened as it should be. And the opportunity to have a blood-based test where you go to your doctor for any other reason and we can take a, a, a little bit of blood from you and tell you whether or not you are at high risk for colorectal cancer could potentially be transformative for screening in the colorectal cancer space. And that's what Luna is trying to achieve. When you're saying that you're at a high risk for developing colorectal cancer, are we talking about simply the high risk or are we talking about the actual early detection of cancer that is already growing? That's a very good question. So the test has been developed for an average risk population. So that's the population from 45 and up who do not have high risk features as we recognize them from a risk perspective. However, I use the term because when one talks about non-invasive screening, whether that be blood or stool, we have to say that this is a screening test rather than a diagnostic. And so okay. a positive um, non-invasive test would require follow-up with a colonoscopy to definitively diagnose the early cancer. But we are looking for average risk individuals who have a growing cancer. Does using uh, Lunar 2 improve the, uh, the treatment outcomes uh, of CRC as far as uh, care? So I can't speak directly to Lunar 2 since we're still going through clinical validation, but it has mm -hmm. been well proven that early intervention and cancers, including colorectal cancer, which are detected at an earlier stage, that, and particularly through screening, there's a really good study that shows that can, people who have colorectal cancer in a group who die from colorectal cancer and a group who do not die from colorectal cancer, by actually being screened, your risk of dying from colorectal cancer was shown to be about 65% less than people who did die. So if you can reduce your risk of dying through screening by about two thirds, 
that's an option we should all be taking. And so we know that from in the totality of the screening options available, we know that in, that outcomes are improved. But I can't say that specifically for Luna 2 because we're at the very early stages of our um, clinical validation. Do you think that once um, the study is completed, will go a long way in identifying different specific types of treatment for specific types of patients? So that's what our um, advanced cancer work does with Garden360. Right now, um, the result that you'll get from having a Luna 2 blood test will be a yes, go have a further invasive diagnostic or a no. Um, there's a potential in the future that we could add features to the diagnostic to the screening product, but right now it will just be a simple yes no. But it's a it's a really good point about what is the potential future here for actually how much information exists in the blood. What do you think is next for Garden Health development of early stage cancer detection as far as Lunar Two and as you mentioned earlier the uh, Garden Three Hundred and Sixty. I mean, there's so many things on our roadmap it's, it's, and there are so many really exciting sort of um, challenges that that this kind of technology can face in the future. Colorectal cancer is our first step, but we recognize that there are other screening challenges out there um, without sort of uh, giving any sort of definitive. We understand that there are challenges in breast cancer, in lung cancer, in ovarian cancer. Mm-hmm. And what's really exciting for, from the perspective of how much we can help, everything that we do in Garden360, everything we learn through the advanced cancer space is actually fueling the development and R&D efforts that we have in our Luna 2 space. And so the more we learn on that side, the more we can actually map out that future path and take Luna 2 into other, diagno- into other um, disease areas. And that's very much on our roadmap. But where can our listeners go online and get some more information about Garden Health and about Lunar 2? We have a recently launched uh, website, so at um, our gardenhealth.com um, uh, HTML website. Um, we have uh, a specific page for Luna, and then we also have a specific page for our Eclipse study. So anybody listening who is about to have a colonoscopy could take a look on there and could potentially be one of our, our subjects who donates their blood and gives us their information about their colonoscopy so that they could be part of what is potentially a a game-changing advancement in the field to bring colorectal cancer screening to a blood-based modality. Well, I appreciate you joining us here on Health Professional Radio. Dr. Lang, been very eye-opening. Thank you, Neil. Great question. You've been listening to Health Professional Radio. I'm your host, Neil Howard, in conversation with Dr. Catherine Lang, Vice President of Health Outcomes and Evidence at Garden Health. Audio copies of this program are available at hpr.fm and healthprofessionalradio.com.au.